education is virtually non-existent. It's so bad. The Common Core, we're going to get rid of Common Core, believe me. We just... Common Core is out. We're going to bring education up. But you take a look at the African-American folks living in the inner cities, where the crime is so bad, you go with your child to get a loaf of bread and you get shot. It's so bad, the crime is out of control. Everything's out of control. You look at Chicago, 300, no, 3,000 shootings, 3,000 shootings since January 1st. The crime rate is incredible. Murders in the United States, nobody tells you this, these people don't tell you this. Murders in the United States, murders in the United States are up 45, did you see the numbers? The highest, the highest they've been, the highest they've been in 45 years. Murder. So murder is the highest it's been in 45 years. We are going to make our country so much stronger, so much safer. And for the African-American community living in the hell of these inner cities, we're going to solve the crime problem. We're going to help with education. We're going to bring our jobs back for everybody. We're going to make the community safe. And you know, I've been saying this. What the hell do you have to lose? They're a disaster. The, the inner cities are a disaster all over. Washington, D.C., Baltimore. You look at the crime statistics. I really say it. What do you have to lose? I will fix the inner cities. It's like a passion of mine. I'm good at fixing things, especially real estate. And importantly, we're going to help big league with education. We're going to bring in choice, which is so important. And so important is we're going to bring jobs back to our country so that people actually have jobs. So I say, I hope you're going to vote for Donald Trump. Same things. Same thing. Same thing with the Hispanic Americans. Is that a correct statement? How many Hispanic Americans do we have here? One. We have at least one. We have a lot. Wow. That's good. We're going to bring jobs back. We're going to bring education back. We're going to bring safety back. Vote for Trump. We're going to fix it. That I can tell you. Vote for Trump. Vote for Trump. So, here's a list of things. We're going to fix our depleted military. Our depleted military. You look at where we are compared to where we used to be. Number of ships. The kind of weapon we have. You look at what's going on with the people we just made rich. Look at what's going on tonight. Just take a look at what's gone on. We want to have peace through strength. We have to be stronger. We have to have better equipment. Our people in the military are the best. But they have old equipment. They have old fighter jets. They have fighter jets that are so old that they have to go to museums where they're on display. They have to go to plain graveyards because they don't make the parts anymore. These are our fighter jets that we're currently using. So we're going to fix our very, very depleted military so that our people in the military can have the kind of depth and the kind of equipment that they deserve. We're going to work with our veterans because our veterans, in many cases, are treated far worse than illegal immigrants coming into the country. We're going to help our veterans. Big veteran state. We're going to help our veterans and help them big league. And they know my plan. It's been posted. And I have tremendous veteran support. There's not going to be waiting online for nine days and seven days and six days and people dying, people dying because they can't see a doctor quickly enough for a simple procedure or for a simple prescription. So we're going to fix that and you all know what we're doing. If you have that kind of a wait, you're going outside to a private doctor across the street, or you're going to a private or public hospital, we'll pay the bill, but you're not going to be dying in our country, not our veterans. You're not going to be dying waiting online for seven days, nine days, and ten days. It's very important. 
We are going to stop drugs from pouring into our country. ICE endorsed us just last week. The Border Patrol agents, 2,000, 16,500, and ICE. So we have ICE, we have Border Patrol. First time either one has ever endorsed a presidential candidate. We are going to stop, and I promise this to the people of New Hampshire, because New Hampshire has a tremendous heroin problem. We are going to stop drugs from pouring in to our country and poisoning our youth. We're going to stop it. We're going to stop it. And we're going to stop people from coming into our country illegally. But we are going to have a big, beautiful door in our wall. And that door is going to let lots of people in, but they're coming into our country legally. Come in legally. We're going to protect your Second Amendment, which is under siege. The National Rifle Association endorsed Donald Trump. And it's the earliest endorsement they've ever given to a candidate, which I'm proud of. These are great people. These are great Americans. And they're doing the right thing. So your Second Amendment under siege. If Hillary gets in, forget it. Forget it. We will protect your Second Amendment. Importantly, importantly, so importantly, I told you about Obamacare, forget it, it's gone. But so importantly, we are going to appoint justices to the United States Supreme Court that you will be proud of. Constitution. We're going to be upholding and respecting our Constitution. So, I just want to say this. When you look back, and we all had a good time, even though your speakers were no good, your teleprompters were no good, as long as Trump was good, that's all that matters. Right? We had a good time. But you're going to look back at this evening. You're going to say, hey, I had a good time. But you're going to go home, and in 15 years, and in 25 years, hopefully in longer than that, you're going to look back at this evening and say, this was a very important evening in your life. More importantly, I love those signs, women for Trump. Because I actually think I'm doing well with women. Whoa, whoa. See, they may have the worst seats, but they're going to be the most famous people, because look at those cameras. So, more importantly, you're going to view your vote on November 8th to be the most important vote that you've ever cast. Because we're going to take back the White House. We're going to have a country that you're going to be so proud of again. We're going to have a country that works. Do you notice we don't win anymore, folks? When was the last time we won? We have Iran nipping at us. You look at what's going on. We can't beat ISIS. I always say, George Patton, I was a fan. Today, he couldn't make it because he wasn't politically correct. He was a little on the rough side, right? It was bum, bum, bum. But George Patton, General Douglas MacArthur, these people are spinning in their graves right now. And for the military people, right? For the military people. The element of surprise. Don't we like that? The element of surprise. So, I hear, who knows, but we hear in Mosul that a lot of the leaders of ISIS are in Mosul, right? I've been hearing that for a while. And they think they're largely in Mosul. About three weeks ago, I started hearing that we, through Iraq, but we, are going to attack Mosul. We're going to attack them sometime within the next few months. We're going to hit them hard, left, right, back, forward. Yes, sir, we're going to attack them. There's only one problem. By the time we attack them, all the guys that we want are going to be gone. They're very smart. 
how stupid are the people that run our country? Why couldn't they keep it quiet? Why couldn't they keep it quiet? Knock the hell out of them, grab them all, and then announce a week later to the American people that we've gotten the bad ones. The bad ones are gone, folks. They're someplace else. We, that's for the military people. They understand that better than anybody. Am I right? Do you think General George Patton, if he were in charge, and by the way, I have over 200 admirals and generals supporting Donald Trump and endorsing Donald Trump. I have 21 recipients of the Medal of Honor that have endorsed Donald Trump. So they like my attitude. They like actually my knowledge. People were surprised the other night when we, by the way, totally, totally annihilated in the debate. Okay? Totally. totally. Remember when she came in front of me? She walked right in front of me. I said, oh, hi, Hillary. But remember, she walked in front of me, answered a question, which is fine. I had no problem with it. And then the next day, they put out something. I invaded her space while on the stage. I invaded. Did you see that? Right? I'm standing. Here's my lectern. No, no. Here's my lectern. And I'm standing there, and we're answering, and this and that. And I was three to one. You know, I had Anderson Cooper, and I had Martha Raddatz. I don't think she likes me too much. I don't think she likes me too much. No, but I had three to one. In fact, I said, what is this, three to one? And Hillary came in. She walked right in front of me. I was at my chair. I was at my lectern. I was standing there. And the reason is I didn't want to be scolded for that. And sure as hell, the next day, he violated Hillary's space. Or, to put it another way, he violated the space of crooked Hillary. So anyway, but she's home now. She's prepping. So we'll see what happens. But when I saw this whole thing on Mosul, day after day, we're attacking Mosul. In two weeks, three weeks, they're not exactly sure. All they know is it's happening. What the hell are we doing? What are we doing? So we're going to have a country run smart. We won't be giving $150 billion to a terrorist state. We'll be looking at that deal so close, inside out and backwards. And if it's not, if they are not living up, I mean, the hardest part for me is we're giving them so much money already. I would have liked it much more before we gave them all that money. But they don't honor that deal to every single little line, every single little word. We're going to rip the sucker up so fast, your head will spin. Your head will spin. It's one of the most incompetent deals I've ever seen in my life. I'm not talking about nation to nation. Secretary Kerry never stood up and said, we're walking. And if he did, he could have made a much better deal. And I don't mind making deals for nuclear. I don't mind making great deals. Don't forget, Obama thinks that global warming is our biggest threat. I happen to think it's nuclear warming. Our biggest threat is nuclear. And it's not global warming, it's nuclear warming. And I'll tell you what, we're going to work very hard on that situation because that situation is getting more and more and more out of control. And Hillary talks tough about Russia. And she talks tough about a lot of things.